The United States is obsessed with China. Every day in America, we are told that China is the reason why our nation is in decline and that we should blame every problem we have on China. What's even worse, look at the message our elected government officials are now preaching to American citizens. Here's the way I think about it. We all have to be part of this. Every American has to say to themselves, China's our enemy. As a native Floridian, I'm ashamed that a publicly elected official in my home state could talk like this. Every American has to say to themselves that China is the enemy. And we wonder why the US-China relationship is falling apart day by day. But it's attitudes like this from Senator Rick Scott that represent a huge problem for the US. American citizens are being conditioned into fearing and hating China, which will be an absolute disaster for our Chinese American community and the hundreds of thousands of Chinese students who come to America to study in our universities. What do you think the average American reaction will be when someone says, I'm from China? Well, if they listen to the advice of Rick Scott, they'll immediately think you're the enemy. You're the problem inside this country. We've already started to see the results of this type of thinking. Just look at this article. Texas GOP bill would ban students from China and three other countries from all public universities. Texas Republicans are fanning the flames of xenophobia and racism. America was built on immigration. Our country depends on welcoming in the brightest minds and immigrants who want to come to this country and work hard. It's no surprise now why scores of Chinese university professors are leaving America and returning home to China. I have to be honest with you. I started this YouTube channel three years ago in an effort to help people better understand China. I've spent a significant portion of my life living in China, learning Chinese, and interacting with Chinese people. It's always been my goal to use this channel as a bridge to foster a better relationship between the US and China and provide the nuance that is often missed from Western media or even other YouTubers who distort the truth about China for their own financial gains. And here I am, an American citizen that is not afraid to use my name and voice to promote something that I believe in, something I believe is needed for peace to exist on this planet. I don't believe most U.S. politicians when they speak about China. And how could I? Most U.S. politicians have never spent a single day of their life inside the country, but somehow many of them think that they are China experts. I lived in China for 10 years and to this day continue to study the Chinese language and culture, but I avoid using the term expert. I've had real life experiences and insights that help me better understand the country and how China operates. One of the things you learn while living in China is the ability to be humble. The words qianxu or humility are very important in Chinese culture. I could live my entire life in China, master the Chinese language, but I will always be a guest inside the People's Republic of China. Instead of traveling to China with an American bias and telling Chinese people they should do things the same way we do in America, I arrived in Shanghai with an open mind and a willingness to learn what life was really like inside the Middle Kingdom. Is China perfect? Of course not. Does China have problems? Of course. Name me a country in the world that doesn't. But I found life in China to be completely different than the image Western media taught me growing up in America. I don't see China as the biggest threat to American democracy. In fact, if we look at institutions like the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, they calculate U.S. democracy has been backsliding since 2005, well before tensions between the U.S. and China started brewing. The future of democracy in America is under threat, but once again, it has nothing to do with China and everything to do with how polarized and divided our nation has become. I made an entire video detailing the difference between how polarized and divided the US and China are. Watch to the end of today's video and I'll share the link with you to watch the presentation. But look at the major issues facing the US today. Is China to blame for our substandard infrastructure? How about the homeless crisis that now dominates cities like Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and LA? Is that China's fault too? Finally, what about the number one problem facing children in America today? Going to school and worrying if they will become the next victim in a school shooting. I can't see how China has any relation to these real life problems that plague American life every day. But instead of addressing the real issues Americans face, US politicians either kick the can down the road and let future politicians deal with the problem, or even worse, project the problem on China and take the easy way out. Here is an internet meme designed to give you a laugh but it's not far from the reality of some of these politicians. Mom, the turkey's burnt. Don't worry, honey. I'll blame China. China, the scapegoat for all occasions. But let's shift the conversation and focus on the main problem between the US and China right now. China is a superpower on par with the United States. It's on track to become the world's largest economy by 2030, and this is something the US simply doesn't want to see. It's quite the contrast from 12 years ago when Barack Obama was president and stated the following in a January 2011 
2011 press conference with then Chinese President Hu Jintao. We welcome the rise of China. I believe that China's peaceful rise is good for the world, and it's good for America. We want to sell you all kinds of stuff. We want to sell you planes. We want to sell you cars. We want to sell you software. And as President Hu and his government refocuses the economy on expanding domestic demand, that offers opportunities for U.S. businesses, which ultimately translates into U.S. jobs. I love these comments and completely agree that a healthy U.S.-China relationship benefits both countries. But in the past 12 years, the U.S. government has shifted from welcoming China's growth to now trying to contain China's growth. The U.S. treats China as a bitter adversary, even though in 2022, the U.S. bought over $536 billion worth of products from China alone. The reality is the average America is caught in an interesting conundrum. Every day, our media tells us that China is our biggest threat. But at the same time, we depend on China to live the American lifestyle we have become so accustomed to. This American dream of having affordable products and an affordable lifestyle wouldn't be possible without our 50-plus year relationship with China. But just look at how the Biden administration has treated China in the past few months. The U.S. government first started its attack on China by allocating $500 million to encourage Western media to blacken China's reputation at every opportunity, even resorting to distortion and fabrication to achieve their objective. Yet when the U.S. needs China's help, Biden expects Beijing to comply and act as a willing supporter. Let me give you some concrete examples. At the G20 summit last October in Indonesia, Joe Biden spoke directly to Xi Jinping and reaffirmed the One China principle. Biden told China's president the U.S. government would do nothing to interfere with Taiwan as part of China. But almost as soon as Biden left the Indonesian island of Bali, he ordered advanced weapon sales for Taiwan and commanded TSMC, the world's largest and most important semiconductor manufacturer, to move part of its operations to the U.S. state of Arizona. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen flew to Switzerland to specifically intercept China as then Vice Premier Liu He on his way to Davos. She asked for China's support for the U.S. dollar by continuing to buy U.S. Treasury bonds. Let's not forget that China is one of the biggest holders of U.S. debt. China has invested over $1 trillion in buying U.S. debt, and it was China who helped bail out the United States during the 2008 financial crisis. Simply put, without China coming in and buying our Treasury bonds in 2008, the U.S. financial system could have potentially collapsed. But after Yellen's meeting with Chinese officials in Switzerland, she then continued her journey to Africa to warn African leaders of working with China. The U.S. government has become obsessed with China's Belt and Road Initiative and even designed a catchy phrase to describe it debt trap diplomacy. But here's the fascinating thing about China's Belt and Road Initiative. China has never seized a single asset from any country because they defaulted on their loans. Despite this glaring lack of evidence, every time a U.S. government official visits the African continent, they give a lecture to African leaders about working with China. The latest example came a couple weeks ago when Vice President Kamala Harris visited Africa to give another lecture once again. Here was the response from Ghana's president. Oh, there may be an obsession in the America about the Chinese activities on the continent, but there's no such obsession here about China is one of the many countries with whom Ghana is engaged in the world. Your country is one of them. Virtually all the countries of the world are friends of Ghana, and we have relations in varying degrees of intensity with all of them. This is the bottom line for the vast majority of the world, especially smaller developing countries. Don't force us to choose between the United States and China. Both countries are superpowers. Both countries are great trading partners. It's in every smaller country's best interest to trade and do business with both the United States and China. But here is the problem that exists for anyone who says something objective or positive about China. Cancel culture now dominates Western society, and people will jump on the bandwagon and be quick to label you a shill, a paid bot or someone who is anti-American, which is actually quite strange to me, since when did hating another country become the American thing to do? Oh, that's right. Maybe I should go back to the beginning of this video and watch that clip from Florida Senator Rick Scott, who told me that all Americans need to get on board and tell ourselves that China is now our enemy. In my videos, I often make bold claims about China. In the past year, I've made videos claiming that China is more democratic than the United States, that the Chinese government is the most trusted government in the world, and that Chinese people are the happiest people on the planet. Now, am I biased towards China? 
or do I simply know how to research and look up credible sources? As a YouTuber who makes content about China, I spend a lot of time analyzing reports. And interesting enough, for all three of those claims, I was able to find data from Western media to support those statements. Is China more democratic than the United States? I use the Democracy Perception Index, which is the world's largest annual study on how people perceive democracy. It's published by a think tank in Scandinavia. Is China the most trusted government in the world? This is not my opinion, nor is it propaganda from China's government. This is the result of an annual survey conducted by Edelman, an American company headquartered in New York, which is the world's largest public relations firm. Finally, the claim that Chinese people are the happiest in the world. Is this high-level propaganda from China's government? No, it's the results of a study published by Ipsos, a French company which currently ranks as the world's third largest research agency. To be completely transparent, I almost never use reports or reference articles from Chinese media because I don't want people to think that there is any conflict of interest or any influence from the Chinese government. Instead, I found these reports from some of the most established Western research groups in the US and Europe. I use them because again, my goal with this channel is to provide the nuance and perspective needed to better understand China. China. Many American politicians have become obsessed with China and are conditioning American citizens for future conflict with China. In my opinion, this would be an absolute disaster for humanity. Thankfully, in my job as a YouTuber who makes insightful videos about China, I'm joined by many of America's top business leaders who feel the same way. Look at this open letter that was written by Maurice Greenberg, the former chairman and chief executive officer of AIG. This letter ran as a paid advertisement in the Wall Street Journal last week and was addressed to both President Biden and President Xi, asking both leaders to work together diligently to repair and stabilize the state of affairs between our two countries. The US and China stand at a a pivotal moment in global history. Our bilateral relationship is the most important one in the world, and pursuing a path to conflict is untenable and would likely lead to one of humankind's most unfortunate chapters. The world is watching. The stakes could not be higher. We must move forward together with great urgency and purpose. To be honest, I couldn't be prouder to be an American and share the same viewpoints as the Americans who signed this letter. Mr. Greenberg was joined by several other prominent businessmen, governors, and former U.S. ambassadors to China, all of whom are wanting to seek peace and cooperation between the United States and China. This is my goal with this YouTube channel, and it's why I spend a significant amount of time working on important videos like this in hopes that more people can see the light, advocate for peace, and be willing to find a way to work together. Everyone, make sure that you watch my video about how US and Chinese citizens trust their respective governments. I use the data from the Edelman Trust Index to make this video, and I promise you, the results will shock you and provide you an incredible insight into the US-China relationship. Click here to watch that video. Thank you for spending time with me today here on YouTube, and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.